Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Also, always, 1776.com, a free site. Today is March the 2nd, 2024. Let's talk about Jimi Hendrix. Let's talk about his mysterious death at 27, at the top of his game. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just point out. Let's say you are a black male, a black woman, a black person. Or you're just sympathetic to the idea of bias in society. Anytime a young promising black person who's in the forefront dies under mysterious circumstances, right? Red flags go up. Concern happens, right? Well, understand, here you have Jimi Hendrix, and it's very important for people to understand who he was. Right? This is a guy who is literally creating the rules. He is a black guy who used to be in James Brown's band, who now has his own group, and of course he is surrounded by people of all kinds of races. He himself doesn't act like someone who has to comply with social mores of the times, right, of the 1960s. Uh, he is a womanizer on a level that's hard to imagine at the time, right? Understand, there's a famous incident where a Hendrix ex-girlfriend shows up and finds two women naked in the room adjacent to Jimmy's bedroom. And they complain to her about the fact that Jimmy has kicked them out of bed. Right? Understand, Hendrix is someone who dates women of different races. The night that he ends up dead, he is at multiple parties with women who used to be his girlfriend, who are of different races, and then he ultimately goes back to his then-girlfriend's hotel room, right? And of course, she is a blonde. She's not black. So here you have a black guy, 27, as he himself put it, got this money, and I don't know why. Right? Understand, Hendrix, while at times he does remakes, his biggest songs, Voodoo Child, Purple Haze, right? The Wind Cries Mary. Understand, those are songs he wrote. An argument can be made that as gifted as Hendrix is on the guitar, and if you're a guitar aficionado, you understand that whoever you think is the best on the guitar Jimi Hendrix, who died at 27, is on the short list. However proficient he was playing the guitar, understand he's a master songwriter, right? Will the wind ever remember the names it has blown in the past? And with its crutch, its old age, and its wisdom, it whispers, no, this will be the last. And the wind cries, Mary. Right? That's from a Hendrix song. Hendrix, of course, had difficulties with a girlfriend and wrote the song as an homage to her. Right? Well, understand, Hendrix could have been writing songs for other people. You get the feeling he would have been very successful. Of course, on the guitar, he has very few peers. And when you couple that with Hendrix's entertainer personality, 
You know, he's moving the guitar around his body. You know, he puts the guitar on the floor while he's playing it. Um, you have the total package. Now understand, many people have copied Hendrix, right? Um, Prince somehow found his way to Hendrix's purple, right? Hendrix, of course, has, you know, famous pictures of himself with one of his favorite colors, purple, in purple jackets, right? Prince copied a lot of Hendrix's mannerisms, even the hair, right? You know, Hendrix has kind of like a wild hairstyle that looks partially relaxed, but it's not really fully conked and stuff like that. And you notice Prince, who himself played an excellent guitar, kind of copying Hendrix a little bit in terms of the hair, right? But understand, there's a foundational difference, and I'm a fan of both, but there's a foundational difference between Prince and Hendrix, right? Prince needed to throw the party. Right, Prince wanted you to come to his house. Right, Prince needed to be in control. He's a centralized figure. By contrast, Hendrix is the person who attended the party. Right, you get the feeling that Hendrix was someone who, you know, liked the idea of being part of a generation even as he's an original artist. And Hendrix, of course, had no problem being beta to someone else's alpha, right? And the someone else is actually his fan base. So understand, the night of Hendrix's death, and again, this is just my opinion, Hendrix is someone um, before my time, but let's just say when I was in college, Hendrix was one of my gold standards. Right? Understand the night of Hendrix's passing. Hendrix is doing things he doesn't normally do. Right? His girlfriend was a little bit clingy. So Hendrix, of course, runs off and goes to two different parties where there are other women who Hendrix has dated. Right? Um... For conspiracy theorists out there who wonder whether Hendrix's girlfriend killed him, right? Let's acknowledge the scuttlebutt here that Hendrix's girlfriend at that time was madly in love with him, according to the people around Hendrix, and viewed them as engaged, right? But understand the other woman around Hendrix. They knew about each other. Some of his ex-girlfriends were friends. Right? This is the guy who cultivated an atmosphere where his girlfriends knew of each other. Right? Hendrix himself did not portray himself as particularly loyal to anyone even though Hendrix is clearly emotionally involved with some of the women. Hendrix isn't making promises to anyone. This is the playboy who lets it be known. Look, I'm young and I'm a playboy. Right? I'm not that interested in settling down. But I would not mind getting to know you. Now it's true that his girlfriend at the time the woman who he's in bed with, when he supposedly suffocates on his own vomit, according to the very short, you know, uh, coroner's report, death certificate, right? Just to understand, she's more clingy than most. But she knows about Hendrix's philandering. She knows about the other women. Right? She understands that. Now, I've been having this argument with my own girlfriend for years uh, about cases like the Chandra Levy case. Just to understand, it's my belief, it's my intellectual bias, that when you have someone who is an obvious philanderer, whether it's Gary Condit, whether it's Bill Clinton, 
because there are so many women that the guy has been with and because the reputation is already out of the closet in my opinion that person is less likely to kill a mistress and that's what these women are right they're not hookups they're actually full-blown relationships right I believe Jimi Hendrix cared about the women around him right they are full-blown relationships and understand Hendrix is single when I use the word mistress I'm just trying to connote that there's more than one woman in his life who he's having a relationship with and the relationship is about more than sex right so understand what happens that night here is Hendrix his main girlfriend is a white girl right she's a bit clingy Hendrix breaks free sometime that night he goes to a party right he's drinking red wine at the party now that's something Jimmy doesn't normally do right I'm not saying Jimmy didn't use drugs I'm not saying Jimmy at times didn't use cocaine in the past right but understand Jimmy had drugs of choice red wine wasn't one of them so Jimmy of course is drinking a lot of red wine at one party at another party a girlfriend of his comes over and she has amphetamines folks this is life in your 20s in Europe at that time when you have some money in your pocket and you're out on the town right so just understand at some stage Jimmy's girlfriend goes back to her hotel room at the party where Jimmy's drinking a lot of red wine right Hendrix being a Steve McNair type look up his lifestyle right same type deal Hendrix goes to a second party right at the second party he gets some amphetamines from an ex-girlfriend Jimmy then goes back to the hotel room where his then current girlfriend is staying now at the room right I understand certainly when I was younger I thought you know what Jimmy must have been killed right let's just keep this real I thought black man pulling a lot of women different races getting a lot of attention right um, in rock there's a hierarchy everyone has their favorite rock guitarist uh, it's almost like a LeBron James Kobe Bryant type thing where the new guy can be great you know the new guy doesn't even have to overlap with the old guy but you're gonna have some fans who think that the new guy is disrupting the hierarchy the new guy by being great is erasing their idol their icon their self-perception perhaps of their own culture so I get the argument that hey you know maybe Jimmy was knocked off right too black too successful um, not into segregation in the slightest right but understand at the hotel room it's just Jimmy and his then girlfriend it's just the two of them I understand Jimmy had issues with his management at the time right I understand some people in the inner circle claim that Jimmy's management had an opportunity to kill Jimmy right folks I don't see that opportunity Hendrix is at two parties he goes back to a hotel nobody at the hotel sees anybody else in the room with Jimmy and his girlfriend right you also don't kill the golden goose if Jimmy and his management had different 
objectives on where Jimmy's career was going to go. I understand Hendricks wanted to completely change his style, completely change his image. The record label, of course, and his management wanted Jimmy to continue to be Jimmy because that was commercially successful. But there is no evidence I've come across that there is any hit ban from Jimmy's management or Jimmy's record label that is lingering at the hotel, that's following Jimmy around, that Jimmy leaves either party with, that he attends that night, right? I don't believe Jimmy's killed by management or by a record label. Let me go one step further, and I understand there are people who track cases like the Tupac case who have theories about how the uh, masters would be worth more with the artist dead. But understand, with Hendrix, there's so much money to go around, right? He's 27. He has a sound. He's also a visual act where people show up. People show up for his shows, right? So Hendrix who has just been in the spotlight for just a few short years, if you have a contract with Hendrix and you're making money off Jimi Hendrix, I don't believe differences in the artistic direction going forward would be a necessary impetus for someone to try to kill Jimmy. Let me also say too that his girlfriend the current girlfriend, is interesting. Because understand, she comes from money. And that makes a big difference. Her family is wealthy. She loves Jimmy. She doesn't need his money. Right? Nor would she need to be in cahoots with some group that wants to knock off Jimmy. Right? I'm not saying wealthy people are pious and are morally superior. But all I'm saying is it's just like professional basketball. If I'm going to try to pay someone to lose games, if I were going to try to pay Steph Curry to lose games, why would Steph Curry need a payoff from me when he's making millions and millions of dollars? It doesn't make sense financially for Jimmy's girlfriend who seems to have just been a young woman in love, right, to be working with outside groups to try to have Jimmy killed, right? That just doesn't make sense. What I do believe makes sense is that his girlfriend had a sleeping disorder. So she was prescribed medication she was on a drug called Vesperax, right? It's by prescription. It's German sleeping pills. So she's in bed and she's asleep. Hendrix shows up, right? Hendrix crawls into bed next to her. Now just understand, Hendrix, who seems to be empathetic and interactive. I believe the women loved Hendrix because Hendrix could actually see the women, right? Could share emotions, could sympathize with their plight, right? Hendrix's relationships, most of them are not about sex, right? I'm sure Jimmy's having great sex and stuff like that. There are people on shows from his inner circle talking about Jimmy's conquest. But understand, Hendrix is different than Janis Joplin. Right? Joplin is involved with strangers. Right? In addition to her relationships. Right? But Joplin, primarily for a stretch, is involved with strangers. Understand, Jimmy has literally a core group of women who he has very close relationships with. 
As I said, Jimmy's relationships are more mistresses than conquests. Right? So I believe Hendrix, who has taken red wine, and he's not a wine drinker, and who has also taken amphetamines that night. Now, while Jimmy did coke, not that night, but while Jimmy did coke, Jimmy wasn't that much of an amphetamines person. I believe Jimmy shows up and Jimmy decides that he's going to take, this is what the autopsy report indicates, he's going to take some of his wife's, excuse me, his current girlfriend's prescription sleeping pills, which are barbiturates. Now, understand, sleeping pills aren't sleeping pills. These were powerful prescription pills. Jimmy shows up after a night of partying. He might not have appreciated that these sleeping pills were more potent than regular over-the-counter British sleeping pills, which were much weaker than Vesperax. Right, so Jimmy has a bubble pack which originally had room for 10 pills. Jimmy apparently takes more than one pill. I believe it's in part because Jimmy's sleep cycle is disrupted by red wine, which he doesn't take on a regular basis, right? Understand, red wine feels good, but could disrupt your sleep cycle, right? And amphetamines, which would have your body racing. Jimmy, trying to get to sleep, takes powerful prescription sleep medication. Now he's lying on his back in bed next to his girlfriend who's sleeping peacefully on the same prescription medication. Now the police and the medical authorities, when they show up after the girlfriend wakes up the next morning and can't wake up Jimmy, I understand she believed Jimmy was breathing when she first woke up, right? She believes he's breathing. There's some vomit next to Jimmy's head. On the floor, the cops notice a mostly empty bubble pack of the prescription sleep medication. The folklore is that Jimmy chokes on his own vomit. Right? I believe the reality is a little bit different. I think Jimmy, who earlier in the night had taken, after alcohol, had taken amphetamines, then takes barbiturate prescription sleeping pills I believe he just wanted a good night's sleep. And, of course, he then lapses into a coma from which he never wakes up. Right? I don't believe Jimmy chokes on his vomit. Maybe Jimmy vomits and, Lord knows, he would not be the first person I've heard of vomiting after drinking a lot of red wine. Maybe Jimmy vomits. Maybe when the paramedics come, there's some reflux on Jimmy. But I don't believe Jimmy would have choked on his vomit if he had not taken the prescription sleeping pills. I think this is simply a young guy who lived a little bit too fast, who was tired, who made the wrong decision after a night of drinking and amphetamines when he took more than one prescription sleeping pill. Right? Jimmy's heart, nothing's wrong with it. There's no rheumatic fever in Jimmy's heart. Top screens show that Jimmy's not coked up the night he dies. Right? Jimmy doesn't have much else in his system. 
but we know he was drinking heavily and we know he took sleeping pills. That's in his system, right? And I believe that the sleeping pills, you know, your body's overshooting when you take drugs like amphetamines. And I believe he's up, he probably took some sleeping pills, didn't fall asleep right away. His girl is knocked out next to him in bed. He probably thought he needed some more sleeping pills. He takes some more sleeping pills. And of course, I believe his body comes off the amphetamines and then the barbiturates kick in. Right? I believe Jimmy's death is accidental. I don't believe Jimmy is suicidal. I know that's another theory. People are saying, well, who would take more than one sleeping pill um, folks, an artist desperate for a good night's sleep after taking amphetamines earlier in the night at a party that were handed to him by a girlfriend um, might take more than one prescription sleeping pill. Also, let's not assume that Hendrix understood the strength of the sleeping pill he was taking. Right? Big difference between me saying, let me get another Somonex as opposed to me saying, hey, that prescription sleeping pill that you took to get to bed, let me take that. Sounds like his girl was sleeping. Sounds like Jimmy was up in the night. Understand, a lot of this takes place after 2.30 in the morning, right? I think Jimmy's insomnia, coupled with his drug use and his attempts to self-medicate to get by the insomnia, are what killed him. Right? Let me also make a few other points too. Hendrix did want to take his career in a different direction. Hendrix did have a cough that was bothering him in the days preceding his death. Right? Um, but Hendrix, according to the people who knew him, and understand there are many not just the people in his entourage, his management, his tour manager, but also the women who he was with, right? The people who saw him at the party, right? None of them viewed Hendrix as depressed. Again, this is not a Janis Joplin situation, right? We'll talk about Janis down the road in another video. She's also someone I consider to be an elite artist and a personal favorite, right? But understand, the Hendrix medical history doesn't have the bouts of self-doubt. I know Hendrix, you know, viewed himself as a man in the crowd. I understand Hendrix gave interviews where he was extremely humble, right? But privately, Jimmy's a Lothario with a host of, you know, very close relationships with a number of people. And most of them did not consider Jimmy to be suicidal or wanting out. Earlier the day that Jimmy dies, he has his current girlfriend, who fancied herself a photographer, take many photos of him because he wanted to change his image and he wanted to go in another direction. This is your 27 year old artist who wanted a greater say in the direction in which he was going. And since Hendrix was, in addition to being a master guitar player, he's actually a songwriter. In other words, he's a wordsmith, right? Vision matters to him. This is not a guy on American Idol who's trying to do karaoke, right? No, Jimmy has some major songs that Jimmy himself wrote. Many people consider Hendrix one of the greatest songwriters of all time. Of course, unfortunately, Hendrix doesn't make it past 27. His body of work doesn't uh, have the volume of, let's say, Prince's, right? But just understand, a guy like this with so much to live for, who loved being a artist, right? Loved being an artist, 
And of course, he's the kind of guy who not only has a lot of women who love him, but he, the night he dies, he is invited to more than one party. He's at more than one party, right? Also understand the amphetamines as well as the wine. It's not like Jimmy brings a bottle to the party, right? The amphetamines, someone gives him the amphetamines. Maybe that's one of the problems. This is not a Rick James situation where, you know, he's procuring drugs and he's living a lifestyle where, you know, the night of the murder, he has amphetamines. The problem here may have been that the amphetamines are street amphetamines, right? Jimmy didn't get the drugs. The drugs were given to Jimmy. Jimmy, who's into being out with crowds and stuff like that, you know, just trust the girlfriend who gave him the drugs, right? They were very close, right? And with the wine, you know, Jimmy's just a young guy at 27 at a party that has liquor. And of course, Jimmy is having a lot of wine, right? Jimmy doesn't come across to me. His autopsy doesn't suggest that Jimmy's a junkie. Right, this is very different than some artists where, you know, the person is barely hanging on, has major substance abuse problems. Right, Elvis Presley. Right, by the way, Hendrix picks up the guitar, right, convinces his father to get him a guitar because he saw Elvis Presley at a concert in Seattle. There's a direct link between Presley and Hendrix, right? But just understand, while Hendrix had a lot of problems, while Hendrix was a recreational drug user, right? The autopsy doesn't show a malformed heart because of cocaine use, right? The night of his death, he seems to have taken a lot of red wine and amphetamines, right? Before taking some of the sleeping pills that his girlfriend had. So I think this is just a young guy in the 60s accidentally ODing on prescription sleeping pills. I don't think the sleeping pills would have killed him but for the alcohol and the amphetamines that he had earlier in the night. Right? This is a young person being young partying a little bit too hard. Those are my thoughts. I understand many people disagree. I understand there are elaborate conspiracy theories involving waterboarding. I understand there's the Jimmy was depressed. Look at the last poem he wrote on a notepad that a friend ended up with. If you subscribe to some alternative theory, some theory other than the theory I have here, and want to discuss it, I invite you to do so in the comment section of this YouTube video. Right? In my opinion, the world lost one of its greatest artists when Hendrix died at 27. Let me just tell you, the people around Hendrix, his management group, they were astonished to learn that Hendrix had died, right? This is not a Freddie Prince situation where the artist was known to have blue moons and people thought that they had to protect the artist from himself, right? No, this is a young guy, a young playboy type guy who has the world on a string and whose arguments with management, this is a guy who changed bands, right? Jimi Hendrix Experience, Band of Gypsies. This is a guy who changed bands too often, just like Janis Joplin there, right? But understand, he's just looking for a direction. He's not a guy with a mental health history. I don't believe he tried to commit suicide, nor do I believe his wealthy socialite girlfriend at the time um, felt a need to kill him because 
he was a person with other women. Understand, Steve McNair is different in that McNair actually had lived the life of a husband, right? McNair, you know, had secrets. Hendrix is out in the street, right? This is a little bit different. He has a lot of women. They know each other, right? Hendrix is single. Hendrix, you know, at the time of his death, and this is important, had two different paternity cases pending against him, right? Two different paternity cases. Hendrix is not portraying himself as a monogamous type. You understand, so this is very different. This isn't a when are you going to leave your wife situation. No, this is a young guy with a bunch of ex-women. It's, it's literally like a network, right? Bunch of ex-girlfriends who he's still close to, right? Who he's at parties with that night. Right? This is someone who doesn't have the wife and kids. I don't believe the girlfriend kills him. I don't believe management would pay her enough to even consider killing the guy she loved. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.